Thank you, Tony, and thank you for the, the telecom review team, and thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, this should be a very interesting, very exciting uh, panel session. We have uh, uh, distinguished panelists and looking forward to this discussion this morning. Um, we're we're going to be talking about, um, uh, throughout the day, of many topics that are concerning the ICT industry. Um, this morning, we're going to try and take a very broad look at the telecom industry and figuring out uh, what are the changes of any. We're going to talk about uh, uh, the new telco or the, the new business model of the telco. Given what happened over the last few years, um, it has proven that uh, uh, behavior of both consumers and enterprises have changed. As consumers, we're happy to, uh, to play online, to work out online, to order our food online, to do practically anything online. So as consumers, our behaviors have changed, and this, of course, has a tremendous impact on the telco model. Uh, even, for, even more so, as enterprises, our behavior has changed. So uh, as enterprises, we've also um, demonstrated that we're very happy to work online, to do remote work, as everybody has, has seen throughout the pandemic. Even more so, also, as enterprises, we've demonstrated that we're very happy to adopt the cloud model in the sense of being able to look at how do, you, do we think about cloud architectures and cloud models to be able to basically distribute our ICT investment, distribute our ICT applications, utilize the cloud native model in, in a very intense way to be able to actually create efficiency in the way we, and, and, and better experience in the way we deliver services internally and externally as enterprises. So that has led, hopefully, to uh, some of our um, uh, telecom leaders uh, in thinking about what happens next. What do we do? How does that affect our business model? How does that affect our strategy? Uh, where do we focus moving forward? What are the things that we're going to look at also uh, moving forward in terms of uh, technology, structure, business models, etc.? So that would be hopefully the, the main um, topic of the panel this morning. Uh, a very interesting uh, panelist. And we're going to have a, about an hour or so discussion. We're pro probably going to cover most of the topics throughout the day that you will see in more detail in the next panels. Uh, however, uh, uh, the, the panel is going to proceed in the following manner, very simple. We're gonna, I'm going to provide the opportunity to each one of our panelists uh, to, to do a five-minute, up to five-minute intro, uh, according to their view on the topic that I just went through. Uh, and then as soon as this is done, we'll go through the panelists. We're going to hopefully create an environment of, of discussion, a nice environment of discussion, QA, which I'll, I'll lead in terms of questions, but also look forward to questions from, uh, from the audience. So uh, without further ado, that is the introduction. I'm going to go through uh, with, uh, uh, with no uh, particular, uh, other than just the way the list has been given to me, uh, I'm going to start with the panelists in terms of uh, uh, giving their perspective on uh, the topic within the next three to five minutes. So. Um, Dr. Chesab, we will probably start with you as the, as the list has, uh, uh, starts with you. So please go ahead and give us your perspective. Yes, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to join you. you. Hold on a sec. I think. Mike, please. I think it works now. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a very good day, everyone. It's my pleasure to join all this excellent uh, event. It's my honor to join with uh, Excellency Majid. Uh, I came from the ITU. ITU is a UN special agency for, uh, responsible for the ICT development. So it's, it's a good time to share what is uh, ITU's perspective of this role of this uh, telcos uh, over through this pandemic. Uh, this pandemic is really a pressing challenge for us. I never expected myself during my lifetime such kind of experience more than two years of this complete lockdown. But pandemic doesn't mean all this, uh, everything is bad. So I have some of the report through the, this pandemic, the ICT industry, they rather raising over their revenue around 70%. And also uh, digital, digitalization is accelerated more than six years. And uh, 
uh, today's subject, digital transformation, is becoming essential subject for everyone to uh, enhance this resiliency for the industry and the organizations, but more seriously, resilience for society. So maybe in this regard, I believe this pandemic has a serious influence to the uh, telco's business as well. I wish to highlight several points. First, our point should be rapid and high demand of data. This demand of this data requests the review of the current infrastructures. It's enough to fulfill users' requirement because we have a very strong requirement to use of this data. And then uh, some of the concerns, questions raised on the quality of these infrastructures, security is good enough, privacy concerns, that kind of question is raised. And again, this will lead naturally how, you, how telcos looking for the future shape of these infrastructures, like a 6G mobile-based, something smart network-oriented converged networks, what shape of these future infrastructures. And that is naturally questioning. This is continuous new investment. That's a subject for CAPEX. Telcos always struggled between OPEX and CAPEX. Never-ending story. What is the role of this uh, the, uh, telcos in this regard? Even yesterday, during the CXO, my CXO uh, consultation meetings, some colleagues talking about uh, telcos want to avoid this technology login or industry login. How you can prepare all this? The second point is data-based business. This high demand of data requests telcos, you have to challenge data-based management, uh, data-based business. So you may need of these very wise, clever uh, platforms to collect data, manage the data, even transforming those data to the valuable information and knowledge. There are many of our industries, whole, actually whole industry, they have already initiated digital transformation. But what is the role of telcos? Where are telcos? I believe telcos are already challenging with the incumbent player in those areas. And also, some of the serious challenges of regulatory regimes, because each industry domain has a different regulatory regimes. How you can solve? That would be a big subject after uh, Corona. And I wish to also highlight this competition, serious competition with the streamline, uh, streaming services. Because during the pandemic, many of the cities already get used how to utilize these virtual platforms, remote participations, conference tools. Even they are get used with online streaming rather than visit to, uh, the cinema house. And there was many online courses like uh, online education, online health check, many, many things is by online. So the uh, question is also raised, where, what's the role of telcos? I uh, get some myself is IPTV should be one of the example. IPTV is a TV broadcasting service over the IP. One of the benefits of IP is connecting everywhere, everybody. But Look at those current telcos, IPTV business, is just competing with the cable TV now. Why other OTT providers like Netflix, Disneyland, they are expanding all over the world. But telcos, IPTV, remain in your local. What's the problem? I challenge with you. Another point is getting a little more serious now is ICT become essential infrastructures. So most of the aspects of ICT becoming the important subject for social considerations, like environmental considerations, how you can organize, manage of this energy efficiency aspect, and what, how do you handle this e-waste of these ICT infrastructures? And also serious challenge is digital divide. ICT infrastructure should be enough to support many of the gaps we have uh, many gaps, not only developing developed, we have a uh, generation gaps, aged generations, young generations. We have uh, serious gaps, especially 
online environment aids the people serious suffer to use of these our devices. And gender gaps, definitely we have gender gaps, and also skill gaps, different skills we have. That kind of things should be raised, and this might be lead our subject become from smart ICTs turning to sustainable ICT. How ICTs support sustainability on the society. Finally, the world is now expanding very seriously. The first one should be we are living in the physical world, but we already get into the cyber world. Social world is now expanding based on the many social networks. And we are living in land-oriented world. We are, don't forget the ocean-based world. There's another world. And also space-based world. How you can extend. Telcos are uh, interesting to expand of your, your society, your, your landscape. This should be a subject. So again, question is raised. What is telco's roles? The, what is telco's functions in those areas? That's my starting point. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jessup. Very interesting. Uh, you've raised many points that we will come back to later in terms of the Q&A. Uh, we're going to move on to His Excellency, uh, Mohammed bin Amour. Uh, please go ahead with your uh, intervention. Thank you, Razi. I think uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, that, uh, Dr. Jessup Lee said all about digital, so it uh, hasn't left for me <laughs> nothing to sell. So in my point of view, I would uh, say that uh, uh, this uh, digital era will be uh, built on uh, mainly four pillars, uh, digital transformation, digital inclusion, uh, digital trust, and uh, digital innovation. Digital transformation because uh, all stakeholders should uh, make efforts in order that uh, all sectors can benefit from uh, the great potential that offers today digital uh, technology. And uh, in this way, uh, there is uh, now many case users that uh, demonstrate what is the potential of uh, digital technologies and uh, what we are seeing in education, in transport, in health, in uh, many other sectors is the result of uh, this fourth industrial uh, technology. And uh, uh, we were uh, witnessing that uh, during the pandemic, uh, this uh, digital transformation uh, were a very good uh, way in order to uh, continue life and in order to save lives also. The second pillar is about digital trust. And uh, uh, there is uh, many efforts that uh, we have to do in order that uh, all people uh, will have trust in this uh, digital era and in digital uh, tools. The third pillar is about inclusion. And uh, now we need to think how this uh, digital technology can benefit for all uh, people in the world, mainly those having special needs and uh, to work on how to have uh, uh, the question of gender to be taken in account in uh, uh, this technology and uh, children and uh, many other uh, kind of uh, communities. The fourth pillar is about digital innovation and uh, here this is the key point in order to make this uh, digital transformation uh, go ahead. So uh, mainly governments and uh, uh, private sectors should uh, put hand in hand in order to make uh, uh, this digital era go ahead through innovation. These are the key points that I want to say uh, for the moment. Thank you, excellent. Thank you. And uh, we, we will come back to uh, actually quite a few of the points also that you raised. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, Engineer Ahmed, um, 
Please, your intervention, just tell us in a few, uh, few minutes what do you think about the new telco and, and, the, and the model. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Vlasi. And I'd like just to start first by uh, congratulating uh, Tony uh, for the 15th edition of uh, Telecom uh, Review Summit. And uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be gathered every year with all these uh, kind of uh, challenges. So I really appreciate it. Uh, this is definitely the era of digital transformation. Uh, last two years proved the importance of ICT sector and how this sector uh, represents a catalyst for the development of any other sector, economical or social or, or any sector in general. Any development in any sector now to happen, you will add the word technology. So you need the ICT, you need the ICT infrastructure as a foundation for the development of all the sectors. Last few years proved that more and more and it uh, accelerated the agendas for every nation who decided to transform their countries uh, digitally. So we witnessed more investment in ICT infrastructure and in fiber optics, which is, represents in a way the cornerstone for this uh, foundation. Uh, more investment in data centers, in cloud uh, storage, in co-location services. Uh, all of that represents a kind of uh, important foundation for the new uh, style of, uh, of life. We see change of the pattern of the flow of traffic. So the traditional flow of uh, traffic uh, used to be uh, from the office uh, pla places where uh, buildings uh, and workers and a lot of traffic is coming uh, back and forth from this uh, area. We see change toward the residential areas where people are more working from home, learning from home, shopping from home, and entertainment as well online. So all of this reflects, in a way, on the change of the pattern of the traffic flow, which definitely will affect, uh, it already affected, and it will affect more and more uh, the pattern of the direction of the investments in the, uh, in the infrastructure. Uh, Hyperscale uh, public clouds, uh, more investment. Uh, one of the uh, top four invested in 2020 more than $10 billion on the uh, under public uh, cloud. This is a big investment in, in only one year. So uh, from one side, uh, nations and, uh, and governments and leadership of these governments uh, now pushing their countries toward digital transformation and transforming the government. Of course, uh, another attention needs to be uh, given to SMEs uh, which always for the life to continue and the business to continue, uh, more focus and attention not to have this kind of gap of government to be transformed digitally, but uh, SMEs and private sector are still not transformed. This is creating a big gap. So this is also another uh, area that uh, we, we will see more investment uh, on that. Uh, maybe I... This is just to answer your question as an introductory in the first two minutes, adding, of course, to my distinguished colleagues mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting topics about uh, you know, technology being the catalyst for, for the entire economy and how do we actually get the SMEs going. Um, Engineer Hazem Twali, please join us, if you don't mind, and uh, we'll get to you in, in just one minute. Um, Etisalat uh, Masar CEO, thank you. Um, we'll get to you in one minute. We're just going through the rounds of uh, introductions of the panelists. Uh, Munir, uh, please go ahead and, and tell us your views and your perspective on this. Just an introdu quick introduction. Thank you, Ghazi, and good morning, uh, everyone. I think your, the, the question is also about the new telcos. So um, I just want to maybe provide a little complementary perspective to what you know, the esteemed panelists have mentioned so far. Uh, I think after the pandemic, we saw that the, the traffic has you know, sometimes more than double, tripled on, on, the, on the networks. And first of all, telcos, uh, communication service providers, uh, you know, kind of realized that their networks were able to cope with it first, which was a great relief to everyone. 
uh, these networks were, were able to cope. Um, and then the role of telco in the society overall was, you know, really got a very positive kind of, there was a very positive impact on this role because of all the support that these telcos provided to the societies and allowed us all to continue operating, working, learning, etc. during the pandemic. But then what's next? The thing is now how to build on this to really grow faster and become more valuable businesses achieving higher return on, on invested capitals and, and so on. And I think I see three key uh, characteristics of what we call the new telcos, working with operators all, all around the world. One, there is an aim for the telcos to become technology companies. This is what every CTO is telling me. I don't want to be a connectivity service provider only. I want to become a technology player. And when you look into it, what does it mean, the new telco becoming, shifting towards becoming a technology player? It means becoming more agile, launching new products at a faster pace, um, becoming closer, I would say, to the web companies, to the, you know, the, the, the big giants in the, in the valley. And also it means mostly making sense out of the data, as Dr. Lee was saying initially. So all of them want to right now say, I want to tap into data and create value out of it. Um, I want to um, you know, use it to improve my operational efficiency, but also create new products and grow. That's the first characteristics, becoming technology companies and becoming more agile. Second is focusing on the enterprise sector, because yes, you know, gaming is a $150 billion market globally, and you know, streaming, we were saying, et cetera, but there is already a lot of demand in, in, the, in the consumer sector. Uh, there is a lot of opportunity, but it's highly crowded. The big thing is really the enterprise market. And we see a second very big focus on the new telco is to deliver things beyond the just simple connectivity to the enterprises, especially all the industries that are now transforming, factories that are you know, um, moving to complete you know, automation and smart cities. We're not going to uh, you know, kind of list them all but how to deliver advanced connectivity services that we can monetize, and how to expand the service from just you know, connectivity to some more advanced things. And here you see different, some companies are, for example, buying, uh, deciding on specific sectors like healthcare. I've seen Telco in Europe we're working with buying an X-ray company, uh, wanting to kind of specialize in the remote diagnostics, for example, and remote patients, etc. So the new Telco, is focused on the enterprise and should not miss the opportunity in the enterprise sector like the OTT, what we called the OTT you know, a few years ago. And with the, we saw recent announcement from AWS and private networks, for example, recently, which says that other you know, actors are coming in, so we need to be ready to tap into this opportunity. And the third one is, of course, the enabler. So there is a tech enabler to achieving these two targets, which is the cloudification. And, and, and what we've seen in the last uh, kind of couple of years is operators or, or telcos becoming far more open to the cloud model and working with hyperscalers and taking data that we thought was very critical, should be kept, you know, kind of uh, on-premise, et cetera, to the cloud, just because this is where we will be able to kind of execute AI at scale. This is where we are going to, to find that agility that is missing, although, and I'll finish here, we see other, of course, strategies with some operators investing millions in data centers um, and wanting to compete in, in that. Interesting. Um, thank you, Munir. I, I think the, you, you are, again, brought on very interesting topics. And, and when you talk about transformation, and you talk about uh, digitization, cloudification, whatever you want to call it, but the, the telco's ability to adopt the transformation of the digitizing its own kind of business model, its own environment, is going to be critical if it's going to go after the enterprise, which is also digitizing and transforming. So how do you go to an enterprise and say, oh, I can help you transform while I'm still you know, kind of not really transformed. I'm still a very basic in terms of environment, whether it's, uh, it's uh, innovation, it's cloudification, it's infrastructure, it's uh, my agility. 
my ability to deliver new services and so on. So that's going to be interesting and, and a nice topic to discuss. How would the telco be able to go to market and say, I can help you transform, and what are the things that it brings to bear for this transformation? What has it done internally as well to transform? I think those will be certain priorities. Um, uh, Hazem, last but not least, please, uh, your, your intro in a few minutes on the topic. I think um, uh, Munir brought it well about uh, the aspiration of a telco, uh, the aspiration of a new telco, what, what telcos uh, should aspire to be. Um, I, I believe that this, uh, as, for as long as I remember, uh, s even more than 12 years ago or 15 years ago, telcos have had always this um, kind of fear to become irrelevant and become a connectivity pipe. And, uh, and we have uh, had a lot of uh, strategists telling us uh, that uh, new frills telcos are coming in, um, you need to, to reinvent yourself. So that narrative is not new. But I believe uh, since the pandemic has come in, uh, this has become extremely uh, the, the, the type of demand and the type of requirements that the customers need from us has, has transformed and has changed in a step way. Um, having said that, the, the angle that I would be adding to, uh, to what has been said already is the, the capability uh, inside the telco and the type of people and the type of talents that we need to bring in. Um, this, this is something that I believe, uh, amongst the other trends, this is something that's going to become extremely important. We need to offer also the talents that we want to attract to, for this reinvention and this transformation for the telco, uh, something that is compelling. And that's why it's important within the telco to, to make very clear uh, about the role that the telco is going to play in the customers' lives. And believe me, it's, uh, it's, it's not an easy one, and I believe it's an integral one. And that's why, uh, for me personally, I find it very exciting that we have all those technology providers and technology trends, and we have to ingest all of this and, and make sense of it for something uh, with, with uh, what's happening in the, in the education, with what's happening in the health sector, with what's happening with uh, all the OTTs. And we have to bring all that, make sense for it for the customers, and that would require a complete different mindset and also a complete different narrative for our people inside. Very interesting. Um, yeah, so, so looking at what happened previously with the OTT era and, and you know, the telco is going to be irrelevant. Obviously, this didn't happen. But what, what's changed more recently? What are those changes in, in, the, in the market? So we'll get to that. What are the changes in the market that will dictate something different? It's another challenge. It's another... Uh, a wave of challenges towards the telco, and what would be the role of the telco moving forward? And you brought that up very nicely, so uh, we will come back to that. Let me just uh, bring it back to Dr. Chasub and start asking questions um, about this, and, and please also feel free to prepare some questions in the audience. Um, I'd like to start with what you brought up in terms of um, we want to, we, as telcos, the new telco is going to have to be focused on, of course, transformation and so on. You brought up sustainability as a key element. So, and this is a big topic today, and I think lots of people talk about sustainability and not in the, in the traditional sense of sustainability and, in, in, uh, you know, being able en to be energy efficient. But as a business, you have to be a sustainable business. What do you, what do you think are the key priorities for a telco if they're going to look at sustainability as a key element, as a sustainable business, what would, what would those be? How would we uh, think about it or go about it? Yeah, uh, sustainability is so important to solve that it becomes more and more important, uh, especially the sustainability has a very strong relevance with the resilience of this society. So telcos, uh, the one of the benefits of this telco is you are already rich all of the communities, even you reach out to the people. So which means so the uh, more resilience of this ICT infrastructure from the telco is e almost equal, same as all society is resilient. So because of this is important of this, the sustainability of these telco infrastructures. Specifically, think about ICT infrastructure. I understand this Etisalat has you already 15 years ago uh, fastly deployed this uh, fiber to the home uh, in the world. The first case, 
this kind of uh, the decision was 15 years ago. That was not easy this, uh, decision, but you decide all that, and that is giving very strong uh, sustainability whole of this Dubai, whole of this UAE, because this infrastructure is sustainable enough. Rather than fastly change or after something new business is coming, you have to change, change. But this kind of thing is one of the example. But very basic infrastructure, relatively easy. But on top of that, many of the telcos looking for following the uh, specific services. Some services coming, they easily try to catch up. Blockchain is coming, try to catch up. Uh, IPTV is coming, try to catch up, catch up, catch up. Rather than of this, you may think about this. What is core competence of this telco business? Because telco business is you are the real expert to challenge long tail areas. Long tail areas because of this, all humans, all devices, your customers. Then how you can uh, keeping of these all uh, long tail areas more resilient, more sustainable ways. That is the point you have to think about to keep of this uh, sustainability. Uh, it's interesting. So, um, core competence of the telco, and, and I think uh, our panelists touch upon this, and we, we, I, I'd like to kind of dive into this a little bit. Uh, sustainability as a business is is different from sustainability as a as a, as a country or as an economy, I think you know embedding sustainability mindset into every element of the business. How do you deliver service? How do you roll out infrastructure? How do you hire people? How do you deliver services to those people internally? It's actually a, a quite a different mindset. Just going back to the core element of the, the telco. So you mentioned technology being a catalyst towards all segments. So this comes back exactly to that point is what, what is the core capability that a telco can bring to those economic segments? Well, how can we, as telcos, add value to those economic segments in terms of being a technology player and, and being able to contribute to their uh, uh, transformation? What, what do you think about that? What okay. would be those core capabilities? Uh, different capabilities, of course, so we're talking here even economic, uh, economical and uh, social uh, sectors. So talking about uh, economical providing uh, the kind of uh, access needed for uh, the business to grow, uh, the reachability, uh, which is you cannot get that without this kind of connectivity and access, uh, providing better quality of service to your customers. Uh, you cannot do that without improving the kind of infrastructure uh, to be able to provide the quality of service that is uh, this, the service and the increase of the services is uh, connectivity needed is increasing day by day, uh, individuals and uh, organizations. Uh, we see more applications, uh, actually uh, there is a study that is saying that on the next five years, we'll see at least uh, 250 million new applications uh, that will be used for improving uh, the business, which is uh, actually, uh, uh, this is number like 50 years. This was a number for the last 50 years. It will be a similar number the next five years. So this is, this is a proof actually that the need for connectivity and the, the infrastructure represents the catalyst for the development of, uh, of all of uh, these sectors in, in many different uh, aspects. Uh, education is, is a very good example on, uh, on that, uh, where now uh, uh, students are able to have their education, learning, and exams as well. Uh, online using uh, the connectivity and of course uh, with the with a close out of many nations uh, had that happened uh, for the last two years we could not have this kind of continuity uh, without uh, the uh, the infrastructure and uh, the dependency on uh, the ICT uh, sector so we see it in different sectors we see also 
uh, transform transformation in public enterprises. Mm -hmm. This is a very good example that uh, I'm, we, we deployed something like this in Egypt. This was a good example for uh, transforming the public enterprises uh, digitally by implementing uh, the different modules of uh, ERP for old organization that they didn't use to have something like this at all. Uh, this was a big change, big transformation. Of course, it has its own uh, challenges, which maybe we'll come later to talk about the challenges, but definitely this, uh, this is a big uh, change and a leap and uh, improved a lot and created a lot of development. Interesting. Um, uh, you, you, so we talk about uh, the, the role of a telco and, and uh, maybe Maybe in some occasions you, you mentioned that Telco is an infrastructure provider. How does it clash with the hyperscalers? What, who, who does what in terms of service delivery? What are the OTT players? In this case, it's a new generation of OTT. I mean, what we knew as OTT is quite different today. But it's a new generation of OTT. So the Telco sitting in the middle of all of this, having connectivity to the customers, and then having these hyperscalers coming in and putting serious pressure on the business model, let's be clear, and having some of those OTT players, they're, they're the new digital providers in terms of applications, come in and potentially being partners or competitors. So, uh, so that's kind of, those are the challenges that we want to talk about later. But in, in one minute, uh, before that, I'd just like to talk about... Uh, yeah, we're, we're talking about transformation, we're talking about the telco's role, etc. cetera. Um, and one of the key elements is, of course, you mentioned digital trust. And, and when we talk about digital trust, we, we talk about uh, uh, cyber security. I know that uh, you've uh, um, recently released uh, the, the white book on cyber security in the region and provide us an overview, if you don't mind, of that. What is the current situation in terms of cyber, in terms of uh, uh, the region? Yeah, thank you for this question. And uh, uh, ICTO, Arab ICT organization, has launched uh, recently a white book on uh, the cyber security in the mm -hmm. Arab region. And uh, the current uh, situation is that uh, the states of uh, cyber security in each country are different from one country to another country, but. Uh, in a general manner, if we have to have a classification of Arab countries in terms of uh, cyber security, we have almost three groups. And uh, the first groups are uh, the champions. And among uh, these uh, champions, we have uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Emirates, and uh, the common criteria of these uh, countries is that uh, they have uh, uh, made the, and uh, 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 effective uh, factors of uh, success, like uh, having a strategy of cybersecurity, having a, a legal framework for cybersecurity, uh, and uh, having a high uh, authority that is coordinating all matters dealing with cybersecurity. And the fourth thing is having invest a lot in terms of human resources uh, dealing and the capabilities dealing with cybersecurity. The second group is uh, the countries where we uh, have almost all of them have uh, cybersecurity strategy, but having many bodies or authorities dealing with cyber security, which makes uh, that coordination is very difficult in terms of uh, cyber security. And uh, they have many also laws dealing with cyber security. They don't have only one text. The third group is mainly countries where uh, we have uh, conflict zone and they have low income and you are speaking about maybe uh, Syria, Libya, uh, Yemen, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, thank you, thank you. Hopefully uh, you can tell us a little bit as well later about the recommendations that came out, some of the key recommendations. Um, Munir uh, and, and Hazim, over to you in terms of uh, the, the discussion around uh, the new role of the telco. One of the things you brought up, Munir, is data, and, and also Dr. Chesed mentioned data. 
Um, but being really a data provider or, or understanding how to manage data, how to organize data, what would the telco do with data? Uh, I'm not talking about data related to, uh, to um, you know, its own environment. I'm talking about data that is related to customers, that is related to enterprises, um, that is related to, you know, anything, IoT, uh, you know, data related to uh, uh, traffic, data related to environment, data related to consumption, economy, etc. How, what, what's your perspective on this? How would the telco become really a, uh, one, a custodian of data and also a data provider to a certain extent? Uh, well, it, it, the use of data is, uh, is today has two angles, as you said. One internal, but it is important to drive operational efficiency and to, to move towards this goal of kind of massive automation that the industry is after, which is a key enabler for the uh, telcos to... Uh, properly support the enterprises and deliver real-time, on-demand digital services, you need to be automated. And also to increase the, uh, the operational efficiency in terms of OPEX, you know, to, 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 to enable much higher profitability. At the same time, but the most important and the most strategic is the kind of uh, the external data and what do we do with it? Well. Take, for example, today we talk a lot about you know, the private networks and the en enterprises. You shouldn't think of the, uh, the operators as wanting to take a big network and then scale it down to, 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 the, to, to an enterprise. It is about solving those customers' problems and managing complexity on their behalf. And this is something telcos can do extremely well. Day in, day out, they manage massive amount of complexity. So I'll give you an example. Recently, with BT, we, uh, you know, in, in, in sponsorship with, with BT, we did a project with the uh, Heathrow, a, like a demonstration with the Heathrow Airport, where instead of just focusing on uh, and the use cases, what to do with the data, were provided by the ex-CIO of the Heathrow Airport. So what they wanted, for example, there the problem is, I want to use 5G connectivity, and I want to be able to reduce the time to use that and, and then use data, then to reduce the amount of the turnaround time for the planes, the maintenance of the planes on the tarmac when they come in. So I want to take that data, and when, when a plane lands, I want to be able to you know, exploit it and then prepare the maintenance teams ahead of when the plane arrives, and then the second thing, I need to provide kind of um, um, uh, high bandwidth connectivity uh, to, to, my, um, to my customers in the airport. I want to be able to sell them this 5G, for example, subscriptions. And at the same time, for example, if there is a plane that is delayed, I want to be able to offer this as a kind of service to my, as a compensation to my uh, premium customers. So this is the, the goal. I want to make revenue out of the, the 5G connectivity in the airport. I want to compensate my frequent flyers and kind of keep them happy, maximize their experience in the airport, and I want to reduce the turnaround time of the planes. This is a combination of using you know, 5G connectivity and data together to then resolve this problem. And this is a typical example, and then we demonstrated how this could could happen, we're not going to do go into the details, but this is a typical use case of how telcos could extend and use that data and become, use it to become kind of providers of value added services to the enterprise. Again, it's not about here is connectivity, it's about what is your problem, I'm going to solve it for you. Interesting, interesting. So, so the telco in this case, and then we're going to get to that because it's actually a nice uh, Nice flow into what Hazim was mentioning before. So the, the telco is, we, we talk about services that the telco can provide to market. Typically, the telco would bring a, a ready service and then deliver it or resell it. Um, here we're talking more about custom capability that you take to an airport. You're not taking a service that's already available and you're reselling it. You are bringing together stakeholders and you're bringing a custom capability to develop that kind of a, of course, leveraging the telco's core capabilities, being uh, uh, infrastructure, connectivity, custodian of data, like it or not, the telcos today have a lot of data, 
a lot of data in, in their hands and, and they are a custodian of this data and how do they manage it and, and use it is going to be quite interesting in the future, but they are custodians of data today. Whether it's social data, whether it's connectivity data, location data, uh, all sorts of data is quite interesting. Uh, Hazim, you mentioned this now. We, we, you talked about the role of the telco and it seems like this flows into what you were saying initially. The telco coming in today and being able to sit with a customer and being the lead in terms of this conversation with the customer and saying, I can bring capabilities to you to solve a particular problem. I'm not here to sell you connectivity or off-the-shelf type services, but do, do you see that as going forward, the, the, not just the integrator, but also the main uh, leader in terms of the conversation with the customer to bring in this kind of capability? I, I think telcos now are aware, uh, we, we are aware, we understand that we are a, a cross-sector platform. Uh, we, we are going to be enabling many sectors at the same time. The, pa the part regarding data, the way we, we see it uh, and for us can create value is trying to understand the customer more. Uh, trying to understand the customer more and bring in the service in a timely way. Uh, so we have to understand the customer and we have to understand him real time as he is going about his business if we're talking about a consumer or uh, an enterprise in a particular uh, use case. So that brings about the complexity that Munir was talking about, uh, that, that complexity of being able to, uh, to apply the right understanding at the right time. So it's not only about creating uh, a big analysis or analytics on data warehouse that takes days to, uh, to process, but sometimes you need to be able to, to take those triggers real time. And that's, that's something that uh, we, we have in the Salat Masr has, have worked uh, on uh, um, a few years ago. And then I, I, will move, I will move to the part that's related to how, how, do, we, how do we position that uh, internally, and it's like, um, why am I saying that telcos are aware of, uh, of, the, new, of the new role? Uh, for example, in Salat Masr, in 2019, we, we put the, the mission statement about delivering services to enrich lives. So we were, we were delivering insightful, segmented services, so that's the bit about the data and, uh, and being able to understand the customer but also create the impact to enrich the customers' lives. And then came the pandemic, and that became even, even more reality. And towards the end, we said, in a changing world. It's as if we have a, a premonition what was, uh, what was about to happen in, in the world. That was in 2019. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's no surprise that the telcos were kind of ready for that new role. Uh, and we have to, to manage all those new complexities coming in. But we also have to rise up to, to, the, to, the bigger, to the bigger meaning that it's important for us to have a positive impact on customers' lives and enrich those lives. Uh, we, we can bring in and talk about all the technology trends that we can select to, to bring that, but it's, it's important that we, uh, we associate with that goal. Uh, and, and then I'll go back to the point of being a, a cross-sector platform that will put the burden on us or the onus on us to, to be able to uh, create the partnerships in, in, in a different way. We have to be a lot more clinical, a lot more methodical in applying the partnerships uh, to bring in uh, all the partners who can help us with the different use cases and apply it in the right time for the customer. Interesting. So um, you, 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 you touch upon again the, the key elements of, of engagement with the customer, and I think Ahmad mentioned earlier that this requires capability change within, within the telco. So you, you, you cannot anymore engage. I mean, the, the, the changes are not just technological. They're also structural, organizational, people, capability. So if, if your salespeople, call them that way, go to visit a customer, they have to be able to have that kind of conversation with the customer, not talk about, okay, how much bandwidth do you need and how many SIM cards do you need, et cetera. I'm okay, I'm oversimplifying, obviously, but that's, it's a big difference in terms of conversation with the customer and the ability to bring the telco's core capabilities with them as they have this conversation. That requires quite a bit of change, as you mentioned and, and Ahmad mentioned internally in terms of the skills and the capabilities of 
the teams across the board. Uh, I'm just going to uh, open the, 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 the conversation with the audience. If you have any questions, please raise your hands. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to continue with the questions myself. But if you do, raise your hands, and we're going to take some of the questions of the audience. We have about uh, seven minutes to go. Uh, meanwhile, as uh, people think about questions, yes? Do you have a question? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> another question. <laughs> question from the floor. I wish to highlight something uh, like uh, this customer service with uh, uh, digital trust. Uh, just a reminding, at the, until the beginning of this 1990s, all telcos, our subject is to defining network performance. That is the major subject. And the end of the 1990s, secret, uh, the quality is coming. The quality, how we can use your quality best, rather than best uh, effort, Guaranteed service is coming. And the year, middle of the year 20, the year 2000, I believe, the, we start of this security. Is that a movement? Yeah. And year, over year 2010, privacy is coming. Privacy is getting serious concerns. And what's next? So we understand security, privacy is very important, but time to time, those two subjects make very complicated our delivering service. Yeah. So I believe, I too believe this next uh, big thing should be how to handle this trust. We actually, uh... Trust is not only the conceptual level, this engineering level as well. So this is trust. And now so many of the industry want to utilize AI. Why? Because AI, you want to make very specific tailoring to your customers. Not just as enterprise, as a whole of enterprise, I want to propose, I want to support this A service to that enterprise. We need more details to fitting of this tailoring to the customers. Yes. Because telco, you already have, already reached all customers, you already get some of the sensing of data, and the telco have a very good systems providing trusted ICT infrastructure like identification systems. You have numbers, you have all identifiers that belong to telcos. Yes, yes. So telcos I, is providing trust frameworks. You, you actually, I was going to ask you that question okay. about data and data governance and data regulation and data policies. If this is something that the ITU is working on, how, what are the key elements of this? Uh, we have a couple of questions from the audience, but really briefly, if you don't mind, uh, around data specifically, do you have anything coming up that, so if I'm, a, if I'm a consumer concerned about privacy, if I'm a consumer concerned about trust, et cetera, is there something that you are working on as the, uh, as the ITU, or is that left to the regulators in specific countries? Yeah, we are, you are absolutely, we are working on this. Uh, quite a, one of our export groups, study group 17, is the home Actually, study group 17 is the multi-stakeholder models. The member state, the regulators, industry operators, all of them get together. So we develop our recommendations to provide some of guidance of the cybersecurity, even privacy aspect as well. Also now challenging how we can define of this trust. Excellent, excellent. Uh, we have a question here up front, if you don't mind. Uh, Sorry, here before, and then there's another question right there. Oh. But if we're going to st oh. just oh. please stand up and say your, or don't stand up, Raise, say your name and, and organization and your question quickly. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, Basim Shaheen, media advisor at TEDRA, Telecommunication and Digital Government Authority. Uh, my comment or question is related to data. Again, data is the, described as the oil of the 21st century. And I came across with a piece of literature from WEF, World Economic Forum, uh, describing data as the, the oil and the NFTs as the tankers or the pipelines. Um, data has, يعني, is, is revolving around three main questions. Question number one is why? Why should I share data? Uh, and this relates to the incentives. Is it payment, preferences, power, etc.? The second question is um, the, wh the what element. 
And here, this relates to the regulation. What regulations are there uh, to allow me to open this piece of data, share this piece of data, um, uh, not share that piece of data, etc. Okay. And the third question is the, uh, the how. And this relates to technology, which, which is the, the easiest part, I guess, uh, in this equation. Yes. And blockchain has uh, answered yani, yes. the, the, the main part of it. Yes, thank you. My thank question you. here is, Ah. Uh, what is the role of telecos and regulators in drawing the whole picture and strategizing or uh, coming up with the Bible uh, that regulates or uh, you know, draws the, the picture for everybody? And who else can work with these two parties, such as the central banks, maybe the courts, etc.? Yes. Who else can work with this in order to come up with... A, uh, regulation that uh, uh, yani comes uh, as a global uh, document for everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, many questions in one question, so very interesting. Uh, we're going to try and, and summarize and, and see if our panelists would be happy to take some of this. So you, you, you talked about uh, uh, who would be, uh, I think essentially, who would be the key players uh, within a nation that would be responsible for data uh, and whether it's uh, being the custodian of data, whether it's being the regulator around data, the government being the, the person or the entity that's going to regulate the use of data, and, and, and every data custodian, how would they share and why would they share? Uh, quite an interesting question. Maybe um, anybody would like to pick this up in terms of uh, uh, comments on... You, you want to yeah. go ahead, especially around the role of the key stakeholders around data regulation. Let me try to answer this. Why you share of this data? If you don't want to share data, forget the smart service. Yeah. Because smart service came from your data. That's your preferences. Identify your profiles. And what level of this data share is depends on each individual. Because of this, it's very difficult to regulate which part is shared or not. Now is a citizen's responsibility. We need a general guidance from the regulators. That's definitely we need. But each citizen, we are now digital citizen. We have our own responsibility to manage my own data. So the government or regulators, their responsibility is, I want to highlight how we can teach our digital citizens to be more responsible for managing of this data. That is a very important subject. Very unfortunately, until having all this many use of these smartphones, nobody trained, nobody educated how I can manage my smartphone for my data. We didn't have such a case. We just utilize. So that's what makes some difficulties. So that would be my comment. Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah, another angle beside the, uh, the smart uh, services, uh, the financial inclusion. The financial inclusion which is definitely we see uh, more importance for the financial inclusion. Uh, and uh, from one side, transforming informal economies and uh, cash-dependent economies to cashless and formal economies, uh, this is really very important now for, uh, for every la nation for, for many uh, obvious reasons. So this will, will see regulation from one side, which we see it mainly central banks in, in every country is playing an important role on that, depending on the technology and what's new on the technology and how they will be able to provide and regulate the financial inclusion in a way. And we see more collaboration with uh, telcos, as has been mentioned, the capabilities of the telcos here played a very important uh, role on making such uh, deployment in, in, in the market. We see digital wallets, uh, potential digital banks, all of that. So this is also another important angle. Interesting. Um, we have um, one last question over there. The gentleman, please, if you can give him the microphone. Your name, your organization, and your question, briefly. Thank you so much. My name is Naim Khan. I belong to I work for Ericsson in Dubai. Uh, my question is that we talked about data explosion. We already know. Uh, what is the 5G role, the how it can help in new telcos uh, to take care of this data explosion and how operators are working with regulators to give them more spectrum? 
I mean, in, in Gulf, we know that we have 5G pretty much everywhere except Egypt or Sudan, where we have seen the data explosion and very scarce spectrum, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so my question is more towards uh, Mr. Hazim, because he's, he's sitting there not to put you on the spot, but how is regulators in, in Egypt and you guys are considering 5G introduction in, in Egypt? And thank you. Thank you. Uh, we, we do have a detailed session on 5G later on, so if you can just, you know, a brief interdu intervention on this. Uh, I, I think with, with regards to uh, the part regarding uh, the, the data explosion and how can 5G deal with that, uh, since even though we, <clears throat> we do not have uh, operational experience with, with 5G in Egypt, but our understanding is that some edge computing can happen and that can make uh, the processing of the data closer to the edge and more targeted and specific to the customer. Also, um, the, the use cases that we understand is that our ability to, to slice the infrastructure and target the infrastructure in a way that is specific to the, to the particular application. So I believe that can, make, uh, that can make particular sense in some uh, particular communities where you have smart cities and you are into particular applications uh, related to uh, uh, different uh, slices of uh, infrastructure or different slices of network capacity and edge computing uh, differently. <clears throat> As for 5G, uh, uh, we, we also belong to Etisalat Group. Etisalat Group, uh, our DNA is very connected to technology and technology advancement, so we, we are ready whenever 5G is going to come in. We were the first to introduce 3G in Egypt, and uh, we also had uh, a massively successful 4G launch in Egypt. And when the time comes, we'll be ready to, to make a spectacular 5G launch, inshallah. Thank you, Hazan. Thank you. Thank you, Hazan. Uh, so we, we're almost, time's almost up, so I'm going to we'll stop with the Q&A and give you an opportunity each to, in, in, in one minute, to really tell us about a few, you, uh, you know, one of the topics that we had on the, the, the Q&A was, you know, the strategy or the opportunities or the focus areas moving forward. If, if I can ask you in one minute each, what would be your top one or two focus areas for telcos moving forward? What would you, from your own perspective, of course, each, what would be uh, that? I'll start with you, Munir. I think the, if I wanted to, 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 to if yes. I wanted to summarize it in, in one word, I would say monetize, monetize services to enterprises. This is the big, big opportunity that is looming in the next five years. Telcos shouldn't let it, uh, shouldn't waste it, should be really focused on it. It starts with delivering advanced connectivity services, of course, the 5G slicing, 5G standalone, etc., will help achieve that to monetize, i.e. sell, you know, real-time on-demand network as service uh, you know, components and monetize them yes. because Customers are ready to pay premium for that, but and beyond, you know, combine this with the all the big data practice, the you know, and bring in AI, data science to then deliver these kind of advanced digital services on top of this connectivity that we Thank mentioned. There will, it's it's a multi-billion dollar, it's like you know, market opportunity, and others are, you know, getting ready for it. So. Telcos are very well positioned to capture it. That would be a key focus area from your perspective. Uh, your Excellency, uh, focus areas for telcos in terms of cyber. You, you talked about the, the, mm. uh, the white book. So what would be the key recommendation for data trust, uh, digital trust in general, that you would like telcos to focus on? Yeah, I think that uh, we are speaking more and more about uh, the new era and the new normal and uh, the life uh, before uh, the pandemic and after the pandemic will not never be the same as it was. Uh, that's why telcos uh, need to focus on uh, how to fit with the customers' uh, need in this uh, new normal life, and uh, digital trust is a key element in order to fit with the customers' need. Yes, in, indeed, making sure that uh, customers are comfortable, that yes. they, whatever you're, in, how you're engaging with them, there's a trust element there that their data is confidential, whatever is private to them, whatever is private to other enterprises. So, indeed, 
Ahmed, one minute. Focus areas, key focus areas. What would those be in your perspective? Okay. Uh, two main focus areas. Uh, more smart investment in infrastructure, which is, I call it shared infrastructure. So, uh, because we will need to invest more in infrastructure, we need to think more of uh, investment on in infrastructure sharing and uh, passive and active. So this is uh, one angle. Number two, expanding horizontally, at least from our perspective, uh, we, we are in Africa. Uh, we see a lot of opportunities in Africa and digital transformation. So uh, horizontal expansion and investing in uh, ICT infrastructure in Africa, this is uh, another uh, important area of focus. Uh, last but not least, we will we'll see the, uh, the tech spending uh, mainly will be focused in four kind of uh, platforms uh, between uh, mobile, uh, cloud, uh, social, uh, and big data uh, analytics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hazen. I think it's, it's for, a, for a telco, as we already established, uh, that uh, it's, a, it's a fairly complex um, place to be. Uh, so one, one or two focus areas uh, will be difficult to, to bring in everything. Uh, but I, I would actually uh, highlight one important uh, bit, which is uh, generally the external orientation. Uh, telcos need to be uh, more and more aware uh, of what's going on. So a lot of trends are, uh, are happening. Uh, and uh, uh, so generally external orientation with, with, the, with the big topics and issues that are happening, uh, for example, sustainability, uh, this is now finding itself uh, to, to scorecards of CEOs now. And I believe this, this, this is a, an important and uh, an exciting perspective uh, for, for me personally. It, it links with providing better meaning for, for what I do as a CEO, uh, actually looking after sustainability in a, in a, in a structured way. So uh, external orientation in general with all the topics, uh, the hot topics like uh, as well, uh, the, the bit regarding the security. The security mm -hmm. is extremely important now and the privacy uh, and understanding customers more. So generally external orientation, the partnerships, uh, the, the technology trends. So uh, a, lot, a lot more of that uh, going forward. Thank you, Hazen. Thank you, Dr. Chesab. If you can close this down, please, with your final comments on, on focus areas moving forward. Yeah, I'd like to conclude uh, with some highlighting that I wish to ask the tailoring of your infrastructure, your service platforms, according to your customers. So AI machine learning is already available, and uh, you already have a data. Rather than following the new technology, like uh, after 5G, you just follow the 6G, and that following the 7G, I don't believe this is right of the way. You think about your infrastructure, how to tailoring, to analyze your functions, features, make this tailoring at your service platforms as well, and also you analyze your customers. That would be one of the ways to find out how you can tailor your service more resilient way, more sustainable way to meet of your customers. Thank you very much, dear panelists, and thank you very much, Tony, for making this happen, and thank you for participating. Thank you.